In chapter four, we're looking at the accounting for a merchandising business. Up to this point, we've kind of talked about a service business, a service business where you have sales uh, and expenses, but you don't have any inventory, uh, no cost to get sold. And that's what we're looking at in a merchandising business. I've written it out on the dry erase board here, the difference between the uh, income statements of a service business versus a merchandising business. This is what we've done before. It gets a little bit more complicated when we talk at a mer merchandising business here. A merchandiser is somebody who uh, buys and sells uh, goods. So they're buying them from other people. They have inventory coming in and inventory going out. So what's the key difference? Well, sales are obviously in there. Net income is obviously in there. Now we have this middle piece here which uh, we're breaking out our expenses, what was previously just one service, uh, one line on the service piece, we're kind of putting it part here and part here. So what's the difference? What is above and cost of goods sold? What is in operating expenses? Well, our cost of goods sold are inventory costs that go into uh, getting the goods ready to be sold. So when we buy our inventory, when we transport, transport it in, uh, anything that relates to getting our inventory ready for sale, the cost of our actual product goes here. Now our selling expenses are going to go down here under operating expenses. So let's think about this. If we're a grocery store, you know, we buy all of our um, groceries, all of our things that we're selling over the counter. Um, the cost of all those are going to go up here so that we know what we are making on each product. So if we bought something for, say, 75 cents and we sold it for a dollar, we would put the 75 cents here and cost of goods sold. Sales would be a dollar and we'd have gross profit of a quarter. Now then that would also need to cover all of our operating expenses, things not directly related to the uh, product. So uh, the salaries of the people who are working in our grocery store, our rent, our insurance, et cetera, all those are operating expenses. So sometimes you'll hear this as a product cost. And down here, you'll hear that as a period cost. Make sure you know the difference between the two. The product costs go above gross profit and the period costs go uh, below in operating expenses to get to net income. So this is a key um, factor of analysis when we talk about a merchandising business. Different people are responsible for different parts of the uh, income statement. Here you kind of have uh, the buyers responsible for our cost of goods sold and our gross profit. The operations people who supervise the store staff um, would be more responsible for this line. So uh, you can break out an analysis of our income statement more thoroughly and hold people responsible and give raises, those type of things. Evaluate the business more clearly using the merchandising uh, format there. Okay, uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, the next formula that I have was how do we actually calculate this cost of goods sold? Let's walk through that real quick. Dropping my pen here, let's see. Okay, to calculate that cost of goods sold, which goes to the income statement there, we got beginning inventory. This is what we had at the end of the previous period, the start of this period, plus purchases. When we buy new things into our inventory, that goes right there. We'll look at the net purchases. So if we return some, we would just deduct those out and just look at the, the, the net of our total purchases, plus transportation in. So... When we pay for shipping to get our items to our stores and we cover that, that will also go into our cost of goods sold. That is a product cost because it's part getting ready uh, the inventory for sale. That's not actual uh, operating expense. We do those together and that is cost of goods av available for sale. All the, op all the goods that are available during the period, what do we subtract out? Subtract out our ending inventory. We'll do a count to figure out what our ending inventory amount is. Once we get that, we know if we had all this during the period, this is what we had left. The difference is our cost of goods sold, what must have gone out, the value of our goods during the period. Okay? Uh, sales discounts and purchase discounts know what 210 in 30 means. Uh, if you pay within 10 days, then you get a 2% discount, or uh, in 30 means the net is due in 30 days. Uh, those numbers could be changed up. It could be like 5, 15, 5% 5 discount in 15 days, net 60, something along those lines. Uh, transportation in. Uh, make sure you know the difference between FOB shipping point and FOB destination point. Let me walk you through that real quick. This will be the last thing we do accounting-wise. So here is a seller 
and here is the buyer of a good. And we have the truck with a little gas pipe uh, shipping our goods from seller to buyer. Now, FOB means free on board until that point. Okay, so what if it's FOB shipping point? What does that mean? Here's our shipping point. The goods are free on board until the shipping point. So they're not free from this point over. So the buyer has to take care of um, the transportation and the risk of uh, transporting it over. The cost and the risk. So the FOB shipping point would be buyer pays. FOB destination point. It's free on board until the destination point. The seller pays for everything on the truck until it gets here to the buyer's dock. So under the destination point, the seller pays and accepts the risk. So if a meteor from the sky comes in and blows up uh, the truck and all the goods are destroyed along the way, it'll depend on what the terms of the agreement are, whether the buyer or the seller is going to be responsible for the loss during transportation. Uh, that's all I had for um, chapter four. The last thing I wanted to do was give you a devotional for the week. The book I picked out is Across the Spectrum, Understanding the Issues in Evangelical Theology. Uh, it's by Gregory Boyd and Paul Eddy. came out about seven or eight years ago. Uh, and what this book does, it's really interesting to uh, look at the different chapters that it has. It takes different debates uh, in evangelical theology. We're not talking about things that are far out uh, in like Jehovah's Witness or Mormonism type things, but looking at issues in the mainline churches. Uh, and looking at scripture and the reason that go about and coming to the views that people have. So, for example, one of the chapters is the women in ministry debate. And it looks at the two different positions that are available, uh, created equal with complementary roles, uh, where men and women are equal, but men are designed to uh, teach in the church, and women are designed to be more caring and uh, supportive roles, or the irrelevance of gender for scriptural authority that uh, more, it's called the egalitarian role, where both men and women are gifted uh, to speak and preach. Uh, so it looks at what examples are provided in the Bible, what scriptures are relied upon, what is the tradition for each one of these arguments. Uh, there's different debates in here, the Lord's Supper debate, where this is my body, uh, where it's the actual presence of Christ at the table, which is the Catholic position, or uh, a memorial view. Uh, another one is the uh, atonement debate. Uh, you know, Christ died in our place uh, is a substitution position. Christ is, destroyed Satan and his works with the Christ as victor position. Uh, it looks at the different scripture that goes into each one of these different uh, views. Uh, and, you know, as you have some discussions with people in the churches, as these come up in Sunday school classes or Bible studies, this would be an interesting resource to, to draw upon and to see what the different uh, scriptures are that kind of lead us to uh, some um, interesting debate. John Wesley said uh, one of his key phrases was uh, in essentials unity in non-essentials liberty in all things charity. Uh, so what that essentially means is if something is critical to our faith like the resurrection of Christ that's something that we're not going to debate on. If it's something that's not essential and there's a little bit of wiggle room that's something that we can have some liberty on but as we approach these things that we have some liberty on and all things charity. So, you know, as we frame this discussion with others who might disagree or have different positions on certain scriptural topics and all things, we should do that with love. So uh, this is the workshop three video. Uh, if you have any questions, then we'll see you in the discussion board and I'll see you next week for uh, workshop four. Thanks.